This is the Gore Club Podcast with Steve Vessel, Derek Sturgeon, and Death Metal Dave. Oh, oh I think we're live. Holy shit. Battle good. Pig. That was a good that was a good man clap. Oh my god. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Steve's got the man clap. I got the man clap. Uh, That's the sequel. The sequel to Paddle Pigs is Man Clap. Man clap. <laughs> well, uh, who did we lose this week in f- cinema history? Who did we lose? Yeah, we just somebody just died. I mean, it seems people like, die every day. I know, but like it seems like this week, alarming numbers. We lost somebody Fuck. from like the genre, like horror genre, yeah. or we just lost oh, somebody. Jo- Joel Schumacher. Yeah, Joel, oh, Schumacher, Joel Schumacher, Schumacher. Yeah, but that doesn't count. Just, it's not everyone bad. hates you now. It's not a real person. Oh, my Batman. God. He made Batman and Robin. Didn't he make the Bat Nipples? He, he made, made the Bat, Bat Nipples. Nipples. He made the, the yeah. Phantom of the Opera movie. Nobody likes that with either. Gerard really. Butler. Like, nobody likes that. It looked like it looked like a really good movie. It's a piece of shit. He's really good about making I movies have that look movie. good. It's a piece of shit. Like, so it's Batman and Robin. It's you don't like piece. Solar? Oh, it's tr- what? Fuck, he's right. Yeah. Fuck. Maybe okay. Derek's actually right this time. No, he's... Yeah. I, I mean, I guess we all like him now because he's dead. But did we like him before? You liked him for Lost Boys. That is not Lost Boys. I don't count things in the 80s. I like Solar Baby. I like a lot of terrible things from the 80s. I like 80s Corey Feldman. Oh my God. I don't fucking like him now. He'd never go see Corey and the Angels. <laughs> I would never do never. it. Did you go to see that? No, God, no. It was like 50 Did you bucks want to go something. see it? No. And not want to tell anybody? God, with all this shit, like the, the Twitter stuff right now with like the speaking out movement, I'm shocked that nobody's... Pull that motherfucker's name out of the hat. Oh, I don't do. Do yeah. I need to? We'll know. go. That, we'll do a deep dive into that on a different show. Oh my god! Let's keep it fun. Let's keep it fun. <laughs> Let's keep it fun. Let's keep it fun. Let's talk about dead Joel Schumacher some more. Holy oh, shit! Okay. Well, I follow uh, Donald Farmer on Facebook, and uh, oh, like he makes all those trashy fucking. Yeah, stuff. they're yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, uh, it's cool. And uh, and he he just named somebody, and I'm kicking myself in my own teeth if I could do that physically. And somebody just passed away. I'm like, oh my god, that fucking sucks. And then here we are on the spot, and I can't remember who it was. Man, I just I suck. I, I was in social networking for a while, so I just came back. I think it, <laughs> I think Joel Schumacher died like yesterday, I guess, or recently, because that was a couple days ago. That was like my return. I was like, oh yeah, they're using the Batman and Robin picture, which I remembered from like all the fucking TV guides that came out back then, and it just brought back like my first thoughts. Like, did the casket have nipples? <laughs> like, like Nipple cat, stupid casket nipples. Or, well, this week, where we talk, oh, hey, fuck it, we'll keep it, we'll go right to a subject, which is soundtracks. Yeah. I don't yes. know why I had to make that subject. Everybody yeah, started, paused. everybody already turned this off anyway, because I was shitting on Batman and Robin. Oh, and yeah, well, some people are actually applauding, pl- probably applauding you. I like Lost Boys, though. Yeah, I fucking good. love Lost Boys. And then we're talking about soundtracks. Lost Boys. Fucking well, Lost Boys. Well, but. yeah, we're talking about, oh yeah, perfect, there you go. That's a great yeah. segue. Uh, I mean, that's fucking great. I mean, that, that's one of the first soundtracks I ever really listened to. And that's what they're known for. I mean, you go to conventions, it's saxophone guy. Can't remember his fucking name. <laughs> literally playing shows by himself. Tim Capella. Oh yeah, my God. Tim Capella. He's, he's actually a really, really is, talented musician. Yeah. I'll, he's with Peter Gabriel. Come he, on. He did a he song dated with, uh, Peter Gabriel? He played with him. Oh, okay. He didn't date him. I, I, I mean, that must be I mean, good. Maybe. I I good for him. I still believe. That's what it is, right? I still that's, believe. that's his gimmick. Yeah. Big mu- he's still he's, like, he was doing a tour and he was going to make jacked. a stop in the city, the city of Louisville, uh, right before COVID, uh, basically yeah. wiped out every bar and restaurant i forgot what convention i saw him at but he it packed was that was it okay so yeah. he packed that whole fucking room though like more so than g tom mack did at the few shows i've seen him that's at. good people were more pumped about Man. you know the sax guy did you hear we talked about this last week with uh with the uh, with the g tom mack song the metal version yeah i mean there's so many different versions of cry little sister yeah but his metal version is yeah God awful. it's bad it's bad well every, anytime they play it live now it's bad mm. i remember he did it with Corey haim forever ago too and that wasn't that wasn't fun for anyone Corey doing his dancing moves yeah no and, then, <laughs> and it, well, that, that was haim not feldman oh and okay so, okay what's well, he that, that yeah was it more was acceptable. more of like a sad haim though so that's what sucked about it because that's the better Corey, of course Corey haim's the best Corey. But G. Tom Mack, I saw him. He did Cry Little Sister at Spooky Empire. I like how we both looked at each other like, Dave, Steve, Steve, Dave. Go yeah. <laughs> you're, about try, you're about to try to fucking give Corey Feldman credit right now? No, More so no. than Corey Haim? Man. No, I'm fucking, no. We're, we were just silently agreeing. With I can do once. two hours of fighting about that then. We'll just me defending Corey Haim. 
Uh, but G. Tom Mack played at Spooky Empire, and they made like a big deal. Cause it's like ten years ago. I guess he wasn't probably doing a lot of shit at that point, and he played at the pool party, and it was the saddest fucking thing though. Cause it's to me, it's like I was excited about it, but then I forget. I'm like, oh man, it's like an old guy doing an acoustic set for Cry Little Sister. It's like 95 oh, degrees in Orlando. He pulled out the acoustic guitar like. Yeah, it was just weird. Reggie Bannister style. Yeah, Reggie's yeah, been yeah, doing that forever. Reggie's does that so that's shit what you too. expect. And he probably yeah. played some songs that you didn't know and yeah. didn't care about. Well, well didn't. What, name a G Tom Mack song. Besides, besides Cry Little Cry Sister. Little Sister I, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I don't know. Dave. That soundtrack also God had damn. that kind of 80s metal thing too. It didn't dude from like, not Journey, but Foreigner do a song with like a different band. I'm oh, you come sure up for the soundtrack? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lou Graham. Some, something of the Night. What is the fucking song called? Oh Lost in the God. Shadows or yeah. whatever. Yeah. I was gonna, I was going to let you have it and I was like, please pull this out of your head. Great, it was a great video. Well, sometimes my I brain is that fucking video. Yeah. What's the name of the band in it? Because I know they- yeah, it, was, it was his name. It was just his name? Yeah. Oh, man. I thought they had like a special like super band gimmick with that. No. Nope. Because I just found out it was a dude from like Foreigner, right? Mm-hmm. Not, I always say Foreigner or Journey. Yeah. They're not the same thing, but fuck it. Who cares? And, uh, <laughs> Somebody fucking cares. Somebody's like, oh, I don't want to know Somebody's what love is, motherfucker. Just what, oh, mother yeah. Fucker. I'm sure there's some underground Foreigner songs I don't know that are great, but I don't give a shit. Well, unless you have their albums, you probably can't name more than two. No, I like, I know what, I know what, I want to know what love is yeah. that you listen to while you're crying on your drive home. It's slowly raining on your car. Yeah. He's got dumped. I'm just going to exhale every fucking five seconds on this because you're just going to shit on everything I like. I'm not shit. And I enjoy that. Well, you love Foreigner. Because I'm sadistic as I'm sorry. fuck. I'm sorry that you love Foreigner. <laughs> well, I, everybody I, has a memory when it comes to soundtracks. Or I do like, like that song. Or like songs yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whether, whether you like the fucking band or not, if a song is in a soundtrack of your childhood, that song is about that movie. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Well, and you know, yeah. you go back to the 80s too when they when they would uh, make music videos and songs about the actual movie. Or when bands got paid yes. to actually write songs right. for the movie. Some of them still do. It was but Texas Chainsaw was Massacre the too. What was the, what was the band? Uh, I mean, there's so many. Uh, uh, late. You're talking about um, uh, Oingo Boingo? Or, I mean, that was already on an album. No, no, no. It was a really crappy video we watched the other day. Oh, uh, Ten Buck Three. Yes. Life is hard. Yes. Life is hard. Okay, Derek's law. No, I know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, I know you're going to hit me with your mug. I'm like, that's not. It. I'm just, I was, yeah. you know, before I go on like a rant again, I'm just like, you know, get your. Oh, shit. no, go, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Get your shit in. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're, no, I have we're no done. opinion. We're done. Texas we're Chainsaw 2 soundtrack's fucking fine. It's good. It's a fucking great soundtrack. But it is. I do like your point, though. Like, I didn't we, even write it up on the board. It's so good. I listen to a lot of shit because it's in a movie. I mean, yeah. There's so much shit that, like, I wouldn't listen to like the fucking Footloose soundtrack normally, but there's songs in it that sometimes like if you hear like I Need a Hero, you're like, fuck yeah, yeah. this this fucking goes. Or there's certain dun, songs dun, that you hear dun, 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 dun. that remind you. Like who the fuck would listen to like Danger Zone without Top Gun and shit like that? I'm a Loggins fan or, because of movies yeah. though. Yeah. If it wasn't for movies, Kenny Loggins would be like, who? Or I know this is like sidetracking from horror, but like Rocky. No. All yeah. the Rocky shit, dude. Like Survivor. I wouldn't, I wouldn't listen to fucking Survivor without Rocky. Or Ro- was it Robert Tepper? It's like, there's the No Easy Way Out guy. Yeah, and then like yeah. his brother did a song, I think, on Rocky Three. Yeah, that yeah. shit is so fucking corny, man. But because it reminds me of Rocky and certain scenes in Rocky, like especially like that No Easy Way Out shit, it's like the montage sad stuff. <laughs> you know, you, you want to think you about say it. montage and I think of Team America. <laughs> yeah. that's how it works. That's how it was, all those 80s things. <laughs> but because that song reminds me of that, I can fucking listen to that in my car. You know, I know all the words to it. It's sad, but... This is sad. I don't think it's, it's sad. a bit. I think it's touching. It's smart. It's smart marketing, <sighs> Dave, too. Dave, he just touched me. He touched you. Speaking of touching, Doc and Dream Warriors. <laughs> Doc and Dream Warriors. <laughs> That's another See, one of those songs. It's well, like I, I, I don't, I don't shirt. like, I don't Besides, like Dawkins. But that's a song that was actually on another album. It was a uh, what, Beast from the East. And was they, it really? Yeah, I never. Knew or that. you know what? No, it's not, well, it was. It wasn't already on the album. They put it on the album. They never released it until like a, a single came out like a few years later. Yeah. And if I'm wrong, please tell me I'm wrong. I love, I love being told when I'm wrong. Nothing wrong with criticisms. Yeah, because that Critic- was, fuck you, Dave. <laughs> that was a fucking great one for me, and that's probably the first like. Movie song I can remember being like fuck yeah it was Doc and Dream Oh yeah, little, I'm wearing, Derek was like, I mean I'm literally yeah. wearing a fucking shirt with "Ain't Gonna Dream No More" across it today, uh, be- <laughs> because I, I, ha- I had the fucking VHS man, and I remember watching that. I had to be six or seven with that VHS, and after the credit during the credits they played Dream Warriors on it. The VHS 
had the bonus feature that it played fucking Dream Warriors. I never saw that in my whole life. And I'm like, this song's fucking great. What is that? <laughs> and of course, by that time, <laughs> it's metal like, as fuck. You know, it's like seven years ago at that point when I watch it. But I fucking loved it. And then part four, Nightmare 4, did uh, Drama Rama. Yeah. I would never listen to Drama Rama my whole life. Now that song's on like every fucking mix I have. And then Tuesday Night. Tuesday night did her song yeah. running from this nightmare. Yeah. There was a lot of, that's, that's, that's another great thing about soundtracks is that uh, maybe even a genre you didn't even give a fuck about. You like it all of a sudden. I mean, not the whole genre, but you like a hip hop like, song. Yeah. Like the fast the, there's song. a Houdini song in uh, trick or treat. Everyone thinks about fast way. Yeah. But Houdini does a uh, haunted house of horror. Or, you know, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And that's on every that. Halloween mix. I ever that's put in this together, scene. Man. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck song is this? Yep. And that, that Fat Boy song didn't even make the soundtrack, though. That's oh, Ready crazy. for Freddy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they made there, there a music the video, video for that. They the made video. Video. Yeah, yeah. hype up for the movie. Well, they made that because Will Smith made uh, that Nightmare on My Street yeah. without Which asking not for affiliated. Yeah. He didn't ask for permission to do that. And he tried to sell it to the studio. And the studio was like, well, no, we'll just go get a cheaper fucking song. We'll hire oh. the fucking Fat Boys. They won't know how much you asked. And that's the short butchered version of that story, but that's pretty much what Just happened. Just Google yeah. it. Well, he, yeah, made a music Google video. It. he made a music video for that song, and then he couldn't even use Freddie's likeness. It never came. Well, it came it's out. Like a guy with a bunch of styluses for his finger. He's, that's what he kills you with is yeah. the record player styluses. It for was his lost fingers. forever. And then they just re- like released it like a year ago. What's the music video? Yeah, the Will Smith video. I remember for a long time it was a thing. You couldn't see it, you couldn't find it. It, sh- it was showed on MTV for a week. Well, Whenever it just the first came out. Yeah. yeah, and it disappeared. And then it popped back up on YouTube maybe two years ago. I don't have a very good concept that's, of time. That's kind of how the it's uh, fairly recent. The NXS video for the Lost Boys came out before the Lou Graham song and anybody else. That was the one where they integrated their music video with Lost Boys scene, uh, scenes for uh, you know Death by Stereo, you know, gonna have a good time tonight. And that that music video disappeared forever. I would find it in somebody's page from Japan and then it would get blocked in the US. I'm like, what yeah, the fuck? So a lot of that. it's that it's weird how that works. There's a uh, as a fast way music video they made for the movie uh after midnight, I think. And it just disappeared off my uh, off my playlist. And I would go look for it and I cannot find that music video. You can always find yeah. some fan made version, but if you know it, you that's not real. You can tell when a fan made music video Fast way, I think that's one of the first times I ever saw like a band just did the whole soundtrack. Fast like when Eddie, you buy the Eddie, album, yeah. It's, Fast but Eddie. yeah, so well, what no, band, Flash Gordon for me. What band did old. Fast Way not Fast Way necessarily go on become, but like their lead singer right went on to be like flogging Molly, flogging fucking Molly, which yeah. is so lead weird because it sounds nothing. But if like you Fast think way. about it, you can kind of hear his voice. You know, yeah, I would. <laughs> that was the worst. <laughs> Damn, do that again, Steve. His voice. I don't know. Awful. I don't it's know like what the Irish. fuck you just did there, but that's fine. <laughs> but like, I would never know the difference between like if you played like Fast Way. Change is going to turn Molly. my microphone down. Well, the, the Black uh, yeah. Roses soundtrack too. That, that was that was one of the big metal. I think that, that, that underground. Yeah, that well, that yeah. that one was actually released by Metal Blade Records too. Was it? Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. Yeah, that was like the first big metal one. The yeah, October Blood. No, uh, that, that no, was that was like, underground. That once yeah. it was le- released, it was like one of those things we'd see in the back of a magazine, and then you'd never saw it anywhere else. You might, you might see it at a horror convention for like two hundred dollars. Yeah, like the original. Later. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, Shocker. <laughs> we can go on for two episodes about Shocker. Shocker. And how At many times I've, I've bought Shocker so many times. I bought it so much that like Scott Majeski from like Days of the Dead, I had to, I gave him one of them. Because I was like, dude, I keep fucking buying this. Because for the longest time, you couldn't find it. I couldn't find that vinyl. So when I, I think I was at a show and Steve found it. Because a fucking course, like yeah. he bought it, and I was like, "Damn it!" Yeah, he this. did. He called me a dick, dick. Yeah, and then like I found it maybe <laughs> should have been faster. I don't yeah, know. yeah, and I got it like six months later, and then I bought it again like a year later, not even realizing it. And then at some point within like six years, I bought it again. So I was like alphabetizing my records, like putting them on a discogs and shit. <laughs> and I was like, I got three fucking shocker records. So I took one and got it autographed by the man himself. And then I had. Gave one to Scott, and then the other one's just there to play with, and it has the poster and shit too. Yeah, you know the foldouts in there. But that was uh, that was another super band, Dudes of Wrath. Oh, the Shocker soundtrack. Yeah, yeah mine was. Uh, Who was made it? up the Dudes of Wrath? Do you remember that? Like what bands they were this from? Desmond Child. I can't remember everybody else. I, I, that was such a weird. I remember the songs I loved the most, which are which is like the Horace Pinker version of the the hip hop version on the side too. Yeah. It's funny you can remember that shit, and then. Uh, Alice Cooper, it's yep. Alice Cooper and Horace uh, Mitch Pileggi, uh, Demon Bell by uh, fucking Dangerous Toys, those kind of songs. Yeah. Of course, everyone remembers Megadeth's 
version. I have friends who fucking hate it, and I'm like, dude, that's that's how I, I it just learned fits about the Alice Cooper that, song. Yeah, yeah, it just I dig it. So it's, it's a fine. remake that he thinks better than the original. Oh, I didn't say it was better. You can't fuck around with that early Alice Cooper band, man. You can't oh, yeah. fuck with that. Oh, no. Yeah, it's not a very good cover, but I associate it with Shocker, so I oh, like absolutely. it. Absolutely, uh -huh. because I can listen to that whole album and just fucking dig it. And some of the songs are pretty bad. Like even for '80s standards, oh, yeah. it's fucking bad because they're like it's like try hard metal. Just, <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's like heavy light, yeah, light metal. It's that voice, like I'm trying to sound tough, but also buy my record. Like, and I, sometimes that just doesn't flow. For well, there's me. one I don't have up there. I didn't even think about, and I listened. I wore the fucking tape out, and that's Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Three soundtrack. It's got MX Machine. It's got a uh, uh, Death Angel. Shit. Oh, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. I didn't just know that existed. Oh well, shit! I got two copies. You can have one. I'll take one. I, I gave your uh, your band leader a copy. Uh, talking about Dave, Death Metal Dave, in a band called Ohm, and uh, the leader of the band is his name's Nate. And I gave him a copy, a vinyl copy of Trick or Treat. We're talking about giving away. Like, dude, I got oh, two. Man. I know you love it. So yeah, it's gone now. His oh ex no. probably threw it in the trash with the rest of his stuff. Oh, that's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still like, got mine. <laughs> Oh, what else we got up here? I mean, we're still on that kick. Well, Return of Living and Dead. And if, if you don't know what we're talking yeah, about, we're, ta we're looking at, I always make a whiteboard, a white board at the, uh, for the, the, everyone just kind of look off and, you know, glance at. And uh, I, Wild it, Zero is it, a fucking amazing soundtrack to an amazing film. Amazing soundtrack, amazing film, amazing DVD special features. Oh, the drinking the game. drinking game. And I have oh, people coming over to Marl Night for that, and they have no fucking idea what they're in for. Yeah. That's and great they're gonna timing. Hear, they're going to hear this podcast after that, so that even makes it better. <laughs> Because oh, they, they agree to it. And I'm like, okay. You're, hope, we're, hope, your, hope your couch oh, is comfortable. We're all going to die. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to make it through the night. So, I think it's it's kind of weird when you look at these. This is probably the weirdest whiteboard we've ever had. I know people can't see it. But it's like all these crazy like Italian names from like all the scores and shit. And Brilliant. We're just, and we're just talking about all the metals. Yeah. Because well, well, right now we're just covering. We're talking about our childhood. Yeah. And then you get older is when you just start, discover like the person who made a score. Yeah. Or it's you a just totally stay different like, kind of thing. You stay like me forever and you just cruise down the road listening to fucking Bud the Chud. The Bud the Bud Chud. Bud the Chud. Yeah. That's so good. It's, is it? It's, it's good for <laughs> it's us. It's so good. But it, it's one of those things that every time I listen to it, you know, you, you know, I don't realize how trash something is until I forget that I have all these soundtrack songs like on my normal everyday mixes. Mm -hmm. So someone's like riding in a car for me and then all of a sudden like <laughs> fucking Tuesday nights, like voice comes on her one song, like running for this nightmare comes on. And they're like, why do you, why, what are you listening? Is this Evanescence? Your like, passenger's oh, just, like just slowly looking at you. Yeah, like, why would you like this kind of music? Oh, I don't like this kind of music. I, I love this it, song. I was like, you got to see the this movie. This song is the shit. Play Bud the Chud at a nightclub and see what happens. Oh, I bet people get fucking wild. <laughs> or the Crypt Keeper rap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I have that single upstairs. Which is my favorite thing about the 80s is the rap songs. They're just like Mania Cup 2 has like the most unnecessary rap about it at the very end. So does Dragnet. <laughs> yeah. They all, like, I just love all that random, like, eh, we're going to have a rap song about it. Freddie fucking raps yeah. you know, on that Fat Boy song. You have Freddie rapping. Oh, my God. The Crypt Keeper fucking rap. The Mania Cup 2 rap. I've got Blade uh, up there. That one, that was that was one of the soundtracks. I was like, who the fuck are these guys? Because, you know, being a fucking white dude, yeah. I knew what someone else told me. Yeah. That one I found by myself, and it has so many amazing bands on there. I was like... I am so fucking white. I need to, I've got <laughs> so to stop this shit. Yeah. I don't know, man. I miss the rap thing. Even though we talked about Dead and Breakfast last week, you know, it had the rapping country artist yeah. the whole time. And he essentially just like at the very end, like raps the whole movie. And I'm like, that's fucking great. With dude. a gather guitar. <laughs> it's just like this corny <laughs> shit, man. But uh, I love that stuff. Uh, we got a lot of weird stuff. Return of Living Dead is like a highlight. That's yeah. It's one of those. It's, yeah. it's so Everybody obvious. loves that. Fucking it's so record. obvious. I almost didn't want to put it up there. It's like Lost Boys. I've got what else? There's uh, a few like very obvious ones, man. Uh, Strange Land, Rock and Roll High School, Rock. I mean, Rock and Roll Nightmares up rock there. Rock and Roll Nightmare, Shocker, Demons, rock, October Blood. Like a lot of these were, they're kind of famous or not. I wouldn't even say famous. Cult favorites because of the music, like yeah. Rocktober Blood. We don't really. Nobody really loves that movie. I like it. I have the same um, set as you. Okay. I fucking have this little head in my house too. I have the fucking records and everything. Yeah, do you? But the movie's not that fucking good. 
<laughs> yeah, I have that shit too. I know you do. But the soundtrack's really what it does it for a lot of people. Or just the fact that you're like making these weird rock and roll horror films. Yeah. Which is a very, like you brought up like Black Roses and we, Wild Zero and Deathgasms. Rock and, roll, too. rock and Roll Nightmare and all that shit. Rock and Roll Thor. You can't fuck with Thor. You can't. Well, now you can. You can fuck that dude all day. <laughs> just, you want a sandwich? God, it's so sad. He still fucking wears that shit. I know. It's fucking scary. Well, it's like a demolition from WWF. They still wear like their weird bondage gear. And they're like these <laughs> two like 60 year old fucking dudes in like tight leather. They wear t shirts over it and that makes it what weird. The fuck? It kind of makes it weirder. I need to look at that. Because it's like leather panties and the well, t shirt. Okay. I, uh, Rock Trooper Blood's a great example. It's not because maybe the movie isn't great, but when you are just grasping at straws for yeah. anything that you can identify yeah. with in a mainstream media, that's one of them. Yeah. Uh, the Gate. The Gate's not really a heavy metal fucking horror movie, but those m- rare, rare instances where they play music, you're just like, oh, that's yeah. not even a real band, but I don't give a fuck. They're kind of based out of Canada. Was it Sabotage, I think? I can't remember. Oh, Saint, uh, Sacrament. Yeah. But on the, on, the, on, the t- on the movie, they renamed them. I almost said TV show. <laughs> the Gate, the TV, yeah, the gate show. TV show. That'd actually be fucking rad. They, they remade that, right? That was a thing. The Gate? Well, they, they have a couple. That was, no, no, no. They didn't remake they the didn't Gate. They never remake the Gate, did they? I wouldn't they? be surprised. I, mean, I don't, I don't know. I've never Please seen Please, someone comment and tell us they did not remake the Gate. They remade the Gate. They, uh, probably. I feel it like in my soul. Oh, my God. I I maybe it's a loose remake, kind of like Drag Me to Hell. No, it's called the okay. game. <laughs> I was trying, man. <laughs> Don't you please try to throw back shit on me? Uh, a little hint of what shade. Else we got up there, we got heavy metal. We got a that's lot. That's just a classic. Yeah. Well, heavy metal, yeah, that's a fucking obvious one. That was one that was like, man. Once again, like I'm a bit younger, and those commercials for that, I was always like, I gotta fucking see that because they come on late night TV all the time. Yeah, and they would show these like badass commercials for it, and like it's like, you know. Not a lot of clothes, lots of loud music, and I'm oh, like, yeah. "Fuck!" It's I just Mel Jack off this. sci-fi, you know, just fantasy, like the, just like the comic. Oh, yeah. I feel like Especially Shane, the early comics. I feel like That's Shane looked up what up I needed. Shit. By the way, what did you by any chance look up the gate thing? I did. And am I wrong? Man, you better not give me a fucking. I, I don't want to have nightmares or okay, so, uh, cry myself to fucking sleep on my little pillow. Okay, Wait, see that's fuck. not that's good news. How can you how can you have a remake? So I was probably like on that IMDb and then I got drunk and I fell asleep and I saw that movie, even though it never came out. <laughs> I probably had a you bad nightmare that I went to. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm trying to keep my conversations legal for the podcast. Mm, okay, I'm not gonna be like, yes, yeah, Steve, I was on acid. I was on, I, yeah, acid rock. Acid. It was just I ate a lot of sweet tarts that night and I fell asleep and I had the dream about it. I, God, I thought that came out. That's fucking weird. Um, let's uh, see. We're not on the remake. I mean, anymore. we can we can go. We, this could be a two episode, two part well, fucking. The thing if is, you want to dig into all of these. It's just scores. Yeah. And, I mean, we, we, Deathgasm was a newer one. It's fucking great. I do like it. And what we talked about kind of before the podcast. What I found interesting is most of us grew up on these like '80s movies that had the rap songs and the well, cheesy, we did. the cheesy metal. Yeah, for sure. And I think we got into scores like. If you're like me, and we talked about this earlier, like on accident, like you bought a soundtrack that ended up being the score, and you're just listening to that shit. Uh, yeah. like, uh, and, uh, Terminator 2, for example. Yeah. Bought, oh, please I tell bought, us. I bought, I bought. I thought I was getting the Guns N' Roses soundtrack, and Man. I got the, like, the score. Yeah. The which, sound of like Arnold which, going in the lava and which shit. Was, <laughs> exactly, which was exactly, which was <laughs> fine, but it wasn't because I was like 10 years old, and yeah. I wasted my hard-earned you, money on dude, that. Dude. If I was 10 years old and I bought that fucking soundtrack, I would fill my bathtub all the way up and just have my thumb up and just like play that fucking song as I went under like <laughs> as you hot killed water. yourself killed in the bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> just like, uh, bye guys. Oh man. Uh, I would do that like every night to guarantee it. And the reason for, like two straight years. The reason I have so <laughs> many like composers up there or bands that cause they like I just pick one out. Christopher Young. He did a slew of fucking awesome soundtracks. Goblin. You know, uh, John Carpenter and Al, Hall, you know, Haworth, uh, th- that that pairing alone. What are you looking up? <laughs> Just keep going. Uh, Jay Chataway, Howard Shore. I mean, Howard Shore goes from making David Cronenberg low budget horror films to fucking, you know, Peter Jackson. Yeah. And so it's so it's all about two nerds getting together, fucking and making awesome movies or 
making awesome fucking making movies. Awesome movies. Uh, I like both. Ways. And then and then you, you have a uh, Tangerine Dream up there, which I'm glad it's on. There. Firestarter and Legend, man. That's right. Uh, three o'clock high. A lot of people don't think about three o'clock high, but you should Dark. definitely check that out. I think they've. Someone has rediscovered it and re-released it, I think. I was really pissed off when I got the Legend like special edition and they took out the Tangerine Dream. Jerry soundtrack. Goldsmith, yeah. yeah. It's still amazing, but it's not what it's I not, want. It's not the same. I need that I need that cheesy music to get me in the mood for It's not cheesy. Darkness. It's perfect. It's fucking perfect, Dave. Uh Philip Glass, Jerry Goldsmith. We've got Bernard Herman, you know, Psycho. You can't fucking go wrong with Bernard Herman Herman at that time. He was kicking everyone's ass, and everyone's ripped him off every fucking sense. Well, yeah, you, you when you say like Psycho and stuff like that, you think of like like the um, like we, we sort of touched on earlier those those songs where there's there's just the one song like Halloween, like everybody well, knows the theme. Harry Manfredini. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then Psycho, everybody knows you know a few things from that. But you you get these you get these very impressionable sections of songs that keep coming back up, or like in Suspiria, where it's one song it's like three songs <laughs> well edited exactly same with the original halloween yes. soundtrack so before. you guys suspiria you guys uh -oh. went to like the the live show right when yeah. goblin plays yeah Claudio. so they, do they just play yes. like those three? they played live yes. to the movie in hd and it was fucking they, amazing. but they play the exact soundtrack from the movie right yeah and then, so they play like the same right thing over and, see, and over i knew it already so i'm yeah. in the audience i'm pretty yeah. much in the front row i think you were there too yeah. dave and then I'm looking around people who are like, yeah, this is amazing. I'm like, just wait. It is amazing. But you're going to realize about 20 minutes in, it's the fucking same song. Yeah. Now, thought... my opinion is Inferno is a much better soundtrack. Yes. To me. It yeah. is. Oh, God. It's amazing. But it's not as like iconic. Because Suspiria is the bigger movie. Well, Suspiria, you know, it, it came out for it, it, it. You know, it's the it's the it's the it's the and first from, film, and it's it's yeah. groundbreaking. It's like Halloween. When you get to Halloween two, that's a whole other soundtrack, and it's more like synthesized and it's actual songs well, they wrote. And Suspiria came on like TV more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like yeah, you get into a broader audience. I know it just I know it sounds crazy, but I mean, really for me, once again, like going with my age range of like, hey, what's going to be on HBO or Showtime when I'm in my Skinamax and Suspiria came on there. Fucking Inferno did not. Nothing else. Argento or if all no, no, no. no. You were lucky if you saw on. Suspiria came. You might have seen Argento's it. name on like Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, and I would rent stuff from them, but they they didn't have that. Uh, Going back to a conversation we never posted, but like we talked about box art and stuff, and those those movies didn't have that box art most of the time either. Those Italian not films, not the Suspiria one. It's kind not, of lame. The kind of lame. First, a lot it's of iconic stuff, yeah. when you think about it, but you go back. I have the box up there somewhere uh, on the wall of VHS, and it's just like you know, it's her. Yeah. If I take, it's not even like lurid colors. It's yeah. just like a nice, pretty pastels. It's like I wouldn't expect expect this to be an amazing fucking film. If I take those Italian films, or as Joe Bob would say, Italian films, Italian. I, That's what my I, dad said. If I take like five of those, and then take Friday the Thirteenth, like part three, and lined up all the VHSs, and had, tell my son to pick one, and he didn't know what any of them were, he would pick out Friday the Thirteenth, part three. Yeah, every time. Yeah, it's coming to get you. Because there was more of like a that Americanized like marketing. Those Italian movies were more like stylish and shit, and kind of to the point, and actually had something to do with the movie a lot of times. Yeah. Well, if they would have <laughs> used American the original like, artwork for those yeah. in American in an, an American market, it would have sold so much better. But they yeah. didn't have any confidence. You look at foreign film movie posters, one sheets, whatever. They're fucking amazing. Oh, they are. Yeah, they're all. And awesome, then we man. come over here and it's just like floating head DVD covers and what the fuck. They did the most we basic. Pay things. a real artist to do that, and we cheated a lot with things too. Like I remember, like uh, if you bought Photoshop, a, if you bought well, if you bought like an NES game, and they, you know, <laughs> it was all like eight bit bullshit. None of it looked great, but if you look at the cover of it, it's like Rambo fucking shooting a bunch of motherfuckers, yeah. and beautiful trees. And he's all muscular and ripped and shit. And you play the game, you can barely see Rambo, <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's kind of how VHSs were, man. Like. You would see these covers to these movies, and you're like, "Holy fuck, this movie looks crazy!" And none of that's in it. Nothing oh. you see on the cover, or what the transfer was so fucked up that yeah. you couldn't even see the, how good the cinematography was. Yeah, exactly. So that, I think that's why, like things like Suspiria and Inferno, they're probably not as popular as other soundtracks and shit. But Suspiria kind of goes that other level because it's on HBO and Showtime and all that bullshit. So. Whereas Inferno is not. Yeah, Inferno. So I don't think it's lost. like a. This is actually the better, higher quality thing. I think it's just more people know this. Yeah. Or more people recommended it. I mean, I know even now more people have seen Suspiria than any other fucking Argento movie ever. Well, yeah, because of the remake. 
You think well, that's all that's that would it? I think, no, no, I think that no. helps. I think. Uh, hey, well, yeah, all remakes. We had this helps. conversation last episode. Every remake helps the original, yeah. whether people want to think about that or not. Speaking of soundtracks, you could probably never get me to really listen to Radiohead consistently. Oh, yeah, but you'll get but that But I Tom love York. that fucking yeah. Tom York soundtrack for Suspiria. I think it's fucking awesome, man. Yeah. And I'll try shit on Radiohead. They do have songs I like, but they don't have albums that I'm like, you know what I'm going to fucking say? I love Kid A now. Yeah, I yeah. understand. And, but that's the Suspiria soundtrack. They knocked that out the park, man. I mean, that was just Tom York, but whatever. You know who else knocked He's out like the park? He's like all of Radiohead, Fucking right? ACDC and Maximum Overdrive soundtrack. You're right. Who it's made Tom, who? Is Tom York <laughs> all of Radiohead? Is he like Falco? He plays just like seven instruments on stage. I don't know. I don't listen to Radiohead. If, if Radiohead and Falco were like the same thing. Oh, Falco's way better. I'm going away. <laughs> Somebody's like right now just fucking mad. Just raging. It's okay. There's somebody just like fucking driving. <laughs> And they're Fuck fun. you. Somebody's yeah. like in their fucking Prius. Just, I'm sorry, you drive a Prius. So it's like, some hipsters just like, Dave Dave drives a Prius. <laughs> mad at me. He's just fucking, oh, he's talking about Radiohead. Uh, what else do we have up there, man? I'm not we talking got, bad uh, about Radiohead. I'm no, saying, it's okay. I had, I had to throw Mandy up there. That Mandy score is the shit. And that's the last score that that guy ever did. Really? Uh, Johan Johansson? Yeah, it's the oh, last one he did. And that sucks because that fucking score is amazing. And it's not, I mean, there's, there, the whole feeling of it is just perfect. It's like even for a heavy metal lover, yeah. you're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, it's 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 amazing." That movie, that whole movie's metal. Like it's kind of weird. It's God like damn it, metal is. fucking movie, which I had no idea going in. I went to the movies to see it. Yeah, I'm thinking like, that. Yeah, I'm like, it's Nicolas Cage. I'm going. I'm gonna see I, him get caged. Yeah, because I, I like cage me. I know he gets a lot of shit, but I, I like his ability to not give a fuck, and he just. He, I, I feel like he's the best B movie actor of all time that just happens to be a Hollywood star, which is really weird. But he should have never been in Hollywood. There's no way that dude should have really been as popular as he is. His because he's totally uncle uh, is Francis just, Ford Coppola. Well, that makes sense. And that he put him in his first few films. Yeah, because like Rumble Fish, things like that. He's just more of a Bruce Campbell style of dude, and he's like, yeah, he's kind of like embracing that now. And Mandy is like the top level shit that you expect from him. Like that over the top acting and that heavy metal kind of atmosphere. That director, like, he knows how to muse that yeah. shit. He's like, no, no, no. Just cage me, baby. Yeah. That, Bring it. The, 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 soundtrack, <laughs> it. <laughs> the soundtrack and the violence in that movie were made for the big screen. Yeah. And like everybody I talked to, I was like, you got to go see this before it's not in the movies anymore. It's only listen. there for a weekend. They don't listen. And everybody waits for like the fucking Blu-ray and they're like, well, it was okay. And I'm like, I if you would have fucking saw it at the movies and experienced that, you yeah. would like it a lot experience more. With, experience it with the other five people in the audience because yeah. that's all that's going to be there. Nobody's going to fucking talk. It was fucking sold out when I went. Oh, good for you. Fuck. Yeah, it was fucking It's like when I went and saw Grindhouse, which is another, by the way, fantastic yeah. double soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, there was three people in the fucking audience with my friend. And we were like, yep, this is what horror fans wanted and this is what they- Really? Yeah, it was bad. At least the night that I went. When I went, I went on the Friday it came out and it wasn't sold out, but it was like half packed. Not even. And I did see a lot of people bitching, saying they thought it would be too long because it's two movies. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Now that's the normal length of a Marvel film. Like, and the fact that it's like- It's a three-hour movie. Yeah. And horror fans always, the drive-in is like a staple of this you right. know, genre. But they don't know that. And they don't even like, know what the hell Grindhouse means. They think, they think it means the movie. Yeah. Like, no, no, it's a fucking whole well, experience. That's, if they knew what Grindhouse meant, then they would like Death Proof more than Planet Terror too. But that's a whole different argument. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we well, go, we I, I agree with the argument that maybe Death Proof should have been first. I agree. You're going to end it on a big fucking bloody explosion. They might as well fucking put uh, uh, yeah. Planet Terror. Well, yeah, that's I do. always been I my think only critique of that film. I think they're both great. I just hate that Death Proof gets shit on like it does, and then Planet Terror gets praised. And I'm like, man, like Death Proof kind of follows like the Grindhouse perfect, perfectly, yeah. and Planet Terror is just kind of like a just a big fuck. And you. it still has payoffs. It's, it's awesome. I love it, yeah. but it's just eh, whatever. The, the man. thing about those low budget films is that there was no major payoff. You had a rubber suit dude, and you were yeah. like, well, okay. I only paid, you know, I snuck into this drive-in. But, yeah. like, that's the whole experience is that it's built up. And those movie posters, you know, I remember that shit. They just did it perfectly. And then you went and saw it. And you're like, well, it's a Tarantino movie as yeah. well. So you're going to get amazing, like, dialogue and yeah. food and just pacing and just fucking wait, and man. Kurt fucking Russell, man. <laughs> that's all that matters. That dude's <laughs> that like, just Kurt Russell. That dude's, like, this guy? That dude's a national <clears throat> treasure. Oh, God. I'll be yeah. sad when he goes. Bone Tomahawk, when that came out, I was like, Bone I knew Tomahawk. it. Yeah. Fucking A. 
I watched that recently, and I had, I had no clue. I was just like, oh, oh, oh you got like, it's a Western. Like an hour into it, you're like. Yeah, yeah. Ah! It was one of those things. I just thought I was watching a <laughs> What's Western. What's Night? And I was like, holy shit, oh, this is awesome. Dude, the guy that makes that movie makes some fucked up movies. He made uh, that Vince Vaughn prison movie, Cell Block. Yeah, whatever the uh, fuck. Yeah. Where dudes just like. Block, uh, whatever the fuck, 90. Yeah. Africa. Like average family man. It's a great. Gets arrested, great. goes crazy in prison, and he's like stomping on people's heads, and they're exploding. It's totally unrealistic. But I'm on my couch, like, just fucking, give me more, give me more. Vince Vaughn fucking people up. And if you're like, I, can't, I couldn't get over that it was Vince Vaughn. Fuck you. Vince Vaughn's like seven foot tall. I can picture him fucking people up. It's because like, oh. it's Vince Vaughn. I thought that was yeah. the whole point is that you take that guy. Who yeah. you, and he snaps. He's, yeah, he's the comedian yeah. guy. Have you seen that yet? I haven't seen that one. Well, go watch it. It'll, <clears throat> it's kind of it's like kind of like in the way of Bone Tomahawk. It gets brutal out of nowhere because it starts off like it's pretty much like tame guy goes to jail for shit. He didn't really kind of not do. And then shit just kind of just escalates. escalates. Yeah. And Bone Tomahawk, you know, neither of these are about soundtracks, though. So, yeah. okay, well, we'll I don't go. Care. River's Edge soundtrack, Gummo soundtrack. What the fuck? That was that, that kind of came out of left field, uh, at least for me. Uh, I, mean, wait, I mean, there's some. What's your favorite soundtrack? Uh, Return of the Living Dead. It's just Return, number one. It, yeah. it was the one. It hit me at the right time in my life. Uh, I always thought that Alice Cooper sang the Party Time song because I was fucking 12, I think. And I was like, yeah, that's a great Alice Cooper song. I bet he wrote that just for it's the lyrics. The Matt's a movie. I didn't know. Uh, I had no idea any of those bands. And that, that introduced me to a whole... How old were you? With, I was 12. You were 12? Okay. It had to be at least 12. So that's like 80, you know, 84, 85. I didn't see it till at least 80, 85, like a yeah. year later. See, I saw Return probably like 93-ish. Yeah. So, no, some kid in the neighborhood brought young, it over. I was like, this is some awesome fucking shit. I loved it. I loved everything about it. And you were so excited. I was just excited. getting into the Sex Pistols. I was just, you know, my, you know, my sister was like calling me a pussy for listening to the wrong metal at the time. I was trying to figure yeah. out who the fuck I was. And my neighbor was like, check this out. Come yeah. here. Don't tell your mom because there's boobies in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. 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 That's what I was uh, like. The soundtrack. Between like... 33 to 40 or 50 love Linnea quickly because it's like, oh, that's the first boobs I saw in my life was yeah. Linnea. And, and if you're listening to this, you have no idea, but uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, Derek is sitting in front of a tank that I made, which is a replica of the Trioxin tank. So yeah, yeah, I, I love it. that movie. Yeah, it's a favorite. I mean, I know here it's a favorite just because of the Louisville. mention of Louisville, yeah. even though it's not fucking filmed here. Core Club like, podcast is based in Louisville, so. And we're based in Louisville, Kentucky. So we got the Return of the Living Dead going for us. That's where we always go. That's where they bomb it. Like, yeah, they bomb it. It wasn't really filmed here. I mean, really, our high point's really like a building getting blown up in demolition, man. Yeah. Like, we always. Get, Wesley Snipes on MTV going, there it is. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, he's right. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. If you're local, you know, like, you know, half the state or city works for Humana. And if you work in Humana, you can look out the building and see where that, you know, because yeah. it's, it's the parking garage for Humana now. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't put all that together. Yeah. It's the parking garage for Humana is where they demolish the fucking building in demolition, man. So I always get excited. When I worked there back in the day, I always get excited parking my car. Like, ooh, demolition man building. Like, who gives a fuck? Me. That's it. Uh, you can pull, uh, we can pull up the but, House of a Thousand Corpses, too. Yeah. I mean, that's That's all, a fucking great soundtrack. It's a good soundtrack. It is. And that's one of those times where, like, that's definitely not the... Actually, that era of soundtracks is a lot of, like, music I don't like. That just fits the movies perfectly. And, yeah. And you've heard us at, like, at your bars several times when you're working... <laughs> Me and J-Bo and Chad talking about all these shitty bands. Yeah. But we have all these memories of these bands and these songs because we watch all these fucking movies like Scream, the whole Scream franchise. Yes. Uh, Freddy vs. Jason, the Rob Zombie movies. Idle Hands. Idle, Idle, Hand, Idle well, Hands soundtrack. Well, dude, I do like The Offspring. Fuck me, right? But, you know, <laughs> like, you know I think well, when is he, he dies in that movie covering the Ramones, right? Yeah. In Idle Hands, yeah. during the Ramones cover, and then the fucking hand comes down. Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. Which, yeah, Ramones in Pet Cemetery. That's one that people don't talk about enough sometimes. Because it wasn't like, it's the worst song they ever made. I'm like, dude, that. Song is perfect I for that. I love ending. that song. But it, it wasn't actually on the soundtrack, though, right? Yeah. Was it on? Wait, the, no, no, it wasn't on the soundtrack. No. Yeah, the, it was yeah. the score. They released the score. Yeah, it was the, the score. Only song. Yeah. And it's like that in uh, in uh, Sheena. Sheena's a punk rocker. Yeah, because I remember there was something like that with it. Yeah, all those movies in the, those late 90s and early 2000s with the, the new metal craze, really. Dracula 2000. Uh, we kind of mentioned like. Power Man 5000, Dracula yeah. 2000. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> perfect. You know, uh. Queen of the Damned. Fuck, I'm not, nobody wants to talk about that except for the soundtrack. I'm not like a corn fan, but that like fucking Forsaken song and all that shit. Like 
Sounds great. You sound like a fan, fan to me. The what, the well, movie that introduced me to Corn was the Street Fighter Two movie, the anime. Okay, anyways, it's at the very it's it's it's, oh, it's cool. a song that plays over the fucking. Oh, so you like anime? anime? Uh, Get out of our club. I said hentai. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I won't talk shit. I love anime. Good. Oh yeah, we can go. We can do a whole a whole episode on, on like old old fucking anime. No, yeah. a lot of those, the the crow was one that I remember pretty oh, crow. Pr- pretty fondly because it came that, right out of the grunge era, man. Yeah, Everything, right out of the a great gr- representation of like that, and then like it had like a random Pantera song on it too. Of course, no <laughs> of course way. It I'm did. Of, no way. I'm thinking of Demon Knight. That's Demon Knight. Tell some. Tell the, the, the crypt. Demon yeah, Knight. That was the one with the Pantera song on it. <laughs> the the right. crow had a lot of like yeah you know, the grunge type shit on it, and that's what I remembered from it for the longest time and now like as an older adult it just seems like it's just sad people that like it can't rain all the time oh <laughs> like, as soon as it really rains is, as soon as it rains in your yeah, fucking city yeah you're that, gonna see that on the you're Facebook. gonna see that like yeah. it's so weird to me it's like man like all these other fucking songs on here but everybody drops back to it can't rain all the time which i know is the quote from the movie but people post that fucking music hey, video and, noose, shit man. and talk about it but that is a great fucking soundtrack. I've had that soundtrack forever too. By the way, I've had it since the movie came out, and it's still I think somehow Max the CD still just exists. Released it, re-released it a couple oh, years ago. I got ago. a shitty CD. Still. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like yeah. Lost Highway. I still have of those. Yeah. It's one of those. It, it's a good soundtrack though. But I like I like most of the bands and shit and the artists on that soundtrack. Whereas like when we get to the late nineties, that's not stuff I normally like. And but we did like a decade of that, like a decade of like. And what drove me crazy about it, because I went from like loving scores and soundtracks to kind of being annoyed by them, like going to Freddy versus Jason's on that our board. That comes with age. And no, well, there's, yeah. no, there's a thing that changed. And what happened was instead of using like scores and like just kind of background music, we started just playing like loud metal in every fucking scene. So a scene that would normally <laughs> be like scary, like Freddy versus Jason. Oh. I'm hearing fucking spine shank and I'm like, <laughs> or, uh, why the fuck do I have to hear spine static shank X. or static X yeah. right now? Like it's people an are action g- scene, man, but it's not an action fucking movie. You know, and, know. That, and that's what it all turned into. They did that, that Michael Bay effect, which once again, I do like Michael Bay's Texas chainsaw, but there are parts of it in trends. Marcus from it Nespel, damn it. That I don't fucking he like. He just produced it. Whatever. It's Michael Bay's <laughs> I know Texas it is. chainsaw. You know what it it's, is. It's got his fingerprints all over it. You it's know, super, super you know what the fuck that movie is. You can look at that movie and know who made that fucking movie, and you can hate Michael Bay all you want, but he has a certain style that you're like, that's a Michael Bay film. Oh yeah, and it's like complimentary in a way I like because Armageddon. it is like you I said, like super Armageddon. slick. Bad Boys Two is the best goddamn action movie ever fucking made, <laughs> and we can argue that all the time. And I can tell you about the Nelly songs on that if we want to go into fucking soundtracks. Hell, please do. But yeah, that was another one though that they did like a song for that. Remember, it was like Nelly and the Saint Lunatics. They did that fucking Bad Boys song, and that was huge. Like that was everywhere when that movie came out. And that's a whole different genre of film that normally doesn't get like soundtrack pops. But they had like their. They went from Bad Boys 1, which had like kind of a mediocre soundtrack and really focused on, they just said the cops theme song a lot. Yeah. You know? And then Bad Boys 2, they had that, you know, they had all that momentum from fucking Bad Boys. They figured like shit out. Fucking 10 years later, pretty much. Yeah, they did that gimmick. And it was, it was huge. It was everywhere, man. I couldn't get away from that fucking Bad Boys, like Nelly song for the longest time. And then I like it now. And I don't even like Nelly. He wears band aids too much. I don't like it. No, nope. recently he's took it. He's taking them off. He took his band aid off. Yeah, he's healed. He's healed. It took a while. But Neely's all healed up. Neely, okay. Nelly's all healed up. He used some Neosporin. Wonder why he did that? Because he's old. No, I bet if I scroll I, Twitter, I could find out. I why. think that's the thing is like when you when you get to a certain age that you're like, oh, God, this soundtrack of this movie fucking sucks. But if you were ten, it yeah. would be amazing. A lot of it is that case. I remember. Uh, <laughs> Well, okay, if they made Lost Boys that right now off. with current music, which yeah. that music at the time yeah. was current, would you fucking like it? Probably yeah. not. Well, I've had that argument for, uh, this is going to sound fucking stupid, but Turtles 2 with Vanilla Ice, right? Yeah, that I love that scene, goddamn that thing. That scene, when I first saw it, I thought it was the coolest fucking thing. And I was I was the yeah. perfect age group for that. When Turtles 2 came out, I was like fucking seven or eight. Oh, it's perfect for you. I was perfect for that. I was in high school. Because I didn't know that, at that point, I didn't know it's Vanilla like, Ice was already, Vanilla Ice. I didn't know Vanilla already really as cool as Ice and was already kind of oh. not cool anymore. <laughs> like, that wasn't in my fucking head. We'll talk about that. Shane's just going to bury his head over there. I don't think it but, counts when you do your own soundtrack but, for your own movie. But Go my Ninja thing is, is like, when people shit on things like now, I'm like, you love Secret of the Ooze. Oh, Imagine yeah. if that came out now 
And this is kind of like a shitty reference at this point because this dude's old now. But then Justin Bieber was on the stage. Right. We would all shit on it. Yeah. But we give Turtles 2 a pass because we're like, yeah, it came out the right time. It came out the right time for me. Not for me. For now. Oh, no, no, for now it's better for me because it's Vanilla Ice, which is like shitty nostalgia because I'm like, that dude became a juggalo. And then, (laughs) and then because knowing what I know now, Kevin Nash appears as Super Shredder. Yeah. That's fucking perfect. That's like art. That is art. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. And then fucking Kevin Kevin Nash Nash shows up. You do that right now. You got my money. Low bar. <laughs> you got my fucking money. Low bar. You could probably book that for less than two hundred dollars. Nash is expensive. Oh, is he? Nash doesn't fuck around. Oh my god, he he's all fuck around. All right, well, I know what I'm worth, Derek. He knows what the fuck he's worth. But there was a lot of that shit back then, man. I, I like those little weird tie-ins. I bought a. You could buy a pizza if you bought a personal pan pizza when the Turtles movie came out. You got that soundtrack. It's a what? tape, two songs on each side How of the tape. the fuck did I miss that shit? Yeah, because you're fucking old, and yeah, I was a kid, true. and I got to enjoy it. Yeah, but I was ordering my own pizzas at that time. Yeah. Well, you know, did you order personal pan pizzas? Yeah. Probably not, no. As no. a grown-ass man? Fuck you, Derek. <laughs> you just sat <laughs> fucking alone uh, outside Toy Tiger. I'm going to change the subject. personal pan pizza. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's, there's, I have a lot of old soundtracks up there, too, like uh, Phantom of the Paradise. Um also, the what was it, Kiss meets Phantom of the Park? Those, you know, those those were fucking. Those aren't the same thing. Those were milestones at that time. Uh, those are the same thing. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, no, two different phantoms. When you said Phantom of the Paradise, I was gonna say, oh, the Kiss thing, and, oh, you, and you went right no. with it. So I was like, oh, fucking sweet. Yeah, it's kind of weird your list because you go from Tales from the Crypt, the Phantom of Paradise, the Freddy vs. Jason. I'm like, fuck, man, you're just. My threw, brain works. You just threw shit out a window. Yeah, just, just everywhere. I, when I shit, it's diarrhea. And just goes everywhere. Tells from the crypt. When you list that, are you referring to like the series Demon Knight. or yeah, Demon Knight? Demon Knight. Yeah, that the Demon Knight soundtrack. Awesome. Yeah, definitely not Dennis Miller's Bordello of Blood. But at least Corey Feldman. I fucking love yeah. that piece of shit. Do you really? I mean, okay. Maybe I, I should, hate I Dennis should, Miller. Let, let, I digress. I really enjoy that piece of shit because it's so over the top. It's so ridiculous, and I love those kind of movies. But when I watched it, it's the same feeling of like, wow, this fucking. You went from a really good like horror movie to this. And if you want to look at it that way, you could be like, okay, well, the, ne- the next episode Dude, of Tales is, is a comedy. Well, yeah, Tales from the Crypt is Plus, you don't like Corey is. Feldman anyways. I hate Corey Feldman. But he's he dies awful on that movie. It. And he dies He it, ruins so that fucking movie. He ruins a lot of movies. But yeah. you, you know what's weird? Like, going back to Bordello of Blood and Dennis I Miller. I exhale a lot in this when I, when I was like, <laughs> When I was, like, way too young to watch, like, the Dennis Miller show or give a fuck about it, yeah. I would try to turn it on at the start of it so I could hear Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Because he came out to that. <laughs> and I was, like, young, and I thought that was, like, a great song when yeah. I was a kid. Because he is. came out, like, it would say, like, Dennis Miller, the 5,000-pound gorilla or whatever. Whatever mm-hmm. he called himself at the time. 800. 800, there you go. And he, he came out to that fucking song. And I would fucking watch that show just to hear that fucking song. I didn't know shit what he was talking about. And then I go back and watch it, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I hate this guy. Yeah, he sucks. Me and this dude would never get along no. in all his lives. But, he was a good yeah. comedian for a minute, and then you realize, like, wow, your politics is awful. Yeah, dude, we, awful. Don't, we don't line up. And I don't want to go, like, too far into politics and shit on it, but it's weird <laughs> looking from, like, how you look at it as a kid. Of yeah. things and go like, oh, I like this song. I don't know what the fuck any of these people are really talking about, but I just want to hear this song at the start and the end. I don't give a fuck about anything else. Then you go back as an adult and you watch. I'm like, I'm gonna kill myself if I sit through all this. Yes, you so will. I cannot. Holy fuck, I can't do it. But yeah, that, that's a weird time, and that's I brought that up to comedian friends a lot too because I'm like, I feel like everybody that was a little kid at some point knew who Dennis Miller was, and you go back and watch him now, you're like, what, what the fuck. That's what was the movie he did with was The Net? Where he was in like with Sandra Bullock. With Sandra Bullock, yeah, yeah. The Net. Go back and watch that for fun right now to see what The oh, Net was. Man. Like the internet. Oh, it yeah. Is, it, is, it is really it bad. Aged really well. Yeah. <laughs> it aged really well. No. The only movie no. that aged better than that was Hackers, which is another soundtrack. Type I don't know. Thing, I think, cyberpunk I, movies of the 90s, I fucking love those things. I love them. Yeah. I think Hackers is a little bit, little bit more ahead of The Net. Like they were still using really? the flop. Yeah, it was when you had the villain that had like a giant fucking keyboard that looked like a Chuck E. Cheese toy. Yeah, he, yeah. what the hell? He's a filmmaker. He's in like short circuit movies. Yeah, and, yeah he's in short and my, circuit. And my science yeah, project. I can't remember his name. Offensively in short circuit movies. Oh yeah, yeah. god damn, so yeah. racist in that. Like, that was racist back, you're like, as fuck. Holy yeah. fuck! You don't notice that because it's funny. You know, well, when you're young, you don't fucking notice it, man. 
I mean, so many the people who wrote it knew it was fucked up. They had to. Yeah, Soul Man used to come on Comedy Central all the time in the nineties. Wow. Which is how do you get by with that shit? You know? Because it's funny, and you know, black people won't sue us. Is like fuck. Like now, look where we are now, you pieces of shit. Yeah. I mean, you look back on that, you're like, what the fuck? Not is people going who on? are protesting, but the people who are the pieces That's of shit who like, got us here. Doing that shit is worse than like tricking me into listening to the fucking corn and all these movies. <laughs> Because <laughs> I would never listen to uh, STP if it wasn't for the crow. No offense yeah. to any Stone Temple Pilots fans. No, man, it's just can, that wasn't my thing. You can like whatever. I wasn't like f- hardcore punk rock, and I was like, what is this easy yeah. listening rock and roll fucking radio yeah. shit? No, I'm definitely not here to judge you. I mean, if you go oh, yeah, you are. 25 minutes of this podcast, I'm talking about how to listen to Bud the Chud in my fucking car. <laughs> like, I get it. You can like whatever the fuck you like, but there's some shit that I'm like, man, you got me to like that song. Mm-hmm. You got me to listen to... I would never listen to Richard Cheese in my entire life. That whole fuck, <laughs> But that Down With The Sickness song in oh, Dawn of the Dawn. Day yeah. is a fucking... It's great. It kills. Yeah. Like, I remember watching that movie and fucking laughing my ass off the first time I saw that in theater. And then I went home and I Googled Richard Cheese and I downloaded it. Oh, and, and the use of that song in that movie. It it's was like it was like a break. Good. It's like, oh, everything's fun. It's Everything, a montage. Everything's great now. Yeah, and then perfect. everything goes to shit almost Which is, immediately. It, it's that's in the first film, just like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. That's and, the proper use of a soundtrack. And or it was if you're perfect. gonna use a song that's really well, ridiculous. And that opened with like metal and shit, right? Then they do like down with the sickness mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah. It's like disturbed and all that. And then you got Richard Cheese. Which I would not like that fucking band. It's just I don't give a fuck about that band. But that song I always remember that. Something's fit <laughs> with like movies. And it, it's, we're talking but about actually, movies and shit. And the movie ended with that and started with the Johnny Cash yeah. song. What's <laughs> funny is like, it's the Sorry. same gimmick for like video games and stuff too. You know, for the gamers out there, like we've all played games in like the 90s and like early 2000s that there's just certain songs you associate it with it. And in certain songs you start to hate because of video games. Because in games you have to listen to it over and over. Oh like, my God. Yeah. Like Rob Zombie's Dracula was licensed for like seven fucking games within a year. And I played like six of them. So like every game I'm playing, like it was like jet grind radio. I'm roller skating. It's yeah. like dig through the ditches, twist the metal. I'm blowing motherfuckers up, dig through the ditches. And I'm like, God damn, stop it. Oh, stop this is it. great because me. people don't realize he's got a Dragula toy or behind his head. Yeah, that's it's right there. That sucks. <laughs> but like, it's one of those songs that, you know, I would probably wouldn't hate it. Cause I like a hellbilly deluxe. That's like my last yeah. Rob zombie moment. Yeah, he, he found the formula and yeah. just wouldn't let it go. But like I, the Chili Peppers is like, wow, dude. Every time that song comes on now, I just want to bash my fucking brains in. Because he, he did license it out. If you want to Google it, Google it. How many video games have Dracula in it? It'll Dragula. Dracula. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. But it was insane. And they did it for like a year. And it, a lot of video games do that shit. And then like EA picked up on it because like the Madden games. You play Madden. Mm. And you remember those like Madden, like when you do the mini games and shit, they have like 30 fucking like. Yeah, you play for like for like a, a regular a, rock songs you listen to. You yeah, know, like, in the matter of like a minute, and you you fail yeah. and you start over, yeah. and then you have to listen to the same yeah. fucking song. Yeah, again. I can't tell you like I know all the words to like Seether songs and shit because I'm mad at. And people are like, how do you know that? And I'm like, because I fucking play a video game. Right. I mean, you don't know about the fucking Bad Religion. You play Tony Hawk so many fucking Tony, times. Dude, you know uh, the goddamn and song. That, and that was, that's what I was going to bring up. Hero. Going into that, Tony Hawk got me into a lot of bands that I like, man. Yeah. Tony Hawk he got, got me. a lot of shit for that. And yeah. he opened up so many kids' eyes. Yeah. Tony to Hawk got music. me into Bad Religion and all that shit, yeah. man. Like, Crazy taxi There's kind great of soundtracks in video games, especially in the 90s and yeah. all the way to the 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's not so much. Now they can focus on like they're trying to be more like movies. So it's like the scores and shit. You know, you don't really oh, have yeah. a random song that just bursts yeah. in. Besides those EA games that I mentioned, they still, as soon as you turn them on. The only EA game I played, they, played was Pride. So I didn't get that. Oh, they, they hit you with stuff instantly. EA. And it's kind of funny because, you know, I got 11 year old. We'll play like NBA 2K. The sports games. As soon as they come on, they play like whatever the new hit rap song is. Yeah. My kid knows like every fucking word to it. I'm like, man, is this like your like Dragula? <laughs> For those that don't know, Derek not only is a horror nerd, he's a sports nerd. I'm a sports he's nerd. It's that weird anomaly uh, yeah. that happens. He's yeah. a bully and a cool guy. No, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much jock like, ass motherfucker. I'm like ogre, but I play D and D. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he puts me in a headlock and screams nerds Nerd. with a joystick. Yeah. <laughs> I am that dude that guy that's just like, look at those nerds. And I go home to my action figures and my DVDs and yeah. my house full of posters. Self-loathing. That's oh, I'm totally self-loathing, man. It's the best. 
<laughs> because then I hang it's a around your child for self-loathing. I hang around my super jock crowd or dudes that train with me and stuff. And it's, it's the funniest thing in the world. Cause they, they hate all this stuff, but then they'll be like, you watch dragon ball Z with us. Cause they love like dragon ball. And all that yeah, shit. I'm, like, wait a minute. I'm like, wait a minute. Like my shit's nerdy, but like over super aggro. Dragon so ball, that's okay. Like, yeah. And I'll, I mean, I do like that shit, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I, we, okay. can, we can do a whole show about like bro movies, like blood sport and kickbox. Or we need to like, totally. And we can go to soundtracks of that too. Cause those uh, movies, like all those fight movies, especially blood sport. Kumite didn't have a good soundtrack. I'm sorry. Blood sport. Dude? All right. Y'all are going to no, get just no fight. Fight, fight. This is where I'm just, <laughs> Wait, I'm just fucking with there. I'm trying to stir the pot. I'll just fight to survive. No, I'm joking. It plays 75 wait, wait, wait. No, I'm times. Right, fuck him. He's very serious about fuck, this. Fuck, 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 no, I'm just Any song that plays while Forrest Whitaker and his lazy eye chase John claude Van Damme. He's a serious cop and detective, man. It took a long time to find him. He let him go. Any song? So you could play like the fucking Benny Hill music? You could. <laughs> oh my God, that'd actually probably make it better. Does that exist? Is that a thing on the internet? It has to be a thing. Oh yeah, it. we'll find it. Or, or like a double mint gum commercial, especially like that scene where like running across the boat. And he just gets away and they're like, oh, I guess he's free. Because he goes AWOL from the military. And it's just like two hours of them chasing he's gotta, him. He's got to defend the name. Yeah, but that whole movie is a soundtrack. Like they play a song behind every fucking scene. It's mostly that Kumite song. Yeah, well, they learned it from, you know, Canon Films or, or whoever, also whoever made Karate Kid Part 17. Yeah. And then there's the, mo- and they have the montage, you know, oh, the fuck song yeah, in the when he's training. Yeah, when he's training and shit and just like, and I think it's the same montage from Kickboxer. Because I'm pretty oh. sure, like, every movie is just, just re edited. John Claude Van Damme, a friend dies or gets hurt and he's mad about it. He's doing the split somewhere. Somebody's tying his, tying his legs to ropes yeah. and stretching them. We're always talking about horror movie tropes and fantasy movies and sci fi, but I think every genre has a trope. It, do, it does. Absolutely. No, they definitely yeah. do. And the like, notebook has its own notebook of tropes. Well, at least, like, with the horror genre, they don't take it as seriously. You know, they, they get it. You know, eventually you, you know, like, okay. And that's a, that's a whole other conversation that people who make the movies don't take it nearly as serious as the fucking fans. Yeah. And we've all been that. We've all been that fan too. Oh yeah. Like, wow. Calm the fuck down, Steve. Is there any other genre besides horror and action though, that focuses on a soundtrack the way those movies do? Like, can you think of a comedy yeah. you've ever been like that fucking soundtrack to that comedy? Oh, well, no. Besides, was, like, Friday. Yeah, like, movies. some of those, like, what's that? Silent movies. What the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. The, uh, Nosferatu actually has a fantastic soundtrack. Yeah. If you want to go classic. That's hard. Yeah. That still falls under the genre. Yeah, Dave, you missed the question. Well, I'm just saying. Do you, you want fucking a, dick. a movie that relies on the, the, the music? I mean, silent movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Any so, one of them. I'm they weren't all horror films. I don't Steve, think I don't anybody's know. right now like, I get the Fifty Shades of Grey soundtrack or whatever the no, fuck. No, probably you know? not. Probably. They still have them when I'm looking for, like, say, Watchmen soundtrack yeah. or whatever the fuck of the, well, like I said, Lost Highway I mean, on vinyl. He exists. He, he brought it's brought right there. Any, anything Kenny Loggins did, probably. But that was like, Danger action, Zone. That was, that's an action movie, though. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, it's not a horror film. That's why, but I said action and horror. The only two genres. Meet me that. halfway. Uh, Caddyshack. Across the sky. Yeah. yeah. Caddyshack. Yeah. Again, yeah. Kenny Locke. Caddyshack 2. Caddyshack yeah. 2. I just can't ever think of like a fucking, like, I've been like co- watching a comedy and going, like, you know what? I got to listen to this soundtrack to this comedy. No, it's mostly pop music or this drama. Or like whatever. Or it's, or an, this... Or it's a cop movie. It's like a saxophone, yeah. like, lethal yeah. weapon. Like, yeah. Well, they usually have like Silk a lot of. stocking soundtrack. I want, I want that. They almost always have music in them, especially like 80s comedies, but I can't ever remember the need to go back and listen to any of it. And I have, I have like the Animal House soundtrack. That's because a lot of it was probably just a pop music of the time, so you could get the music in other places. I mean, Maybe, but I feel like you could probably get most of this shit, especially the yeah. 2000s. And you could thank like George Lucas for that kind of shit, like for like American Graffiti and making a soundtrack that fits the movie that actually is integrated into the fucking movie. Like when you would say like a Halloween too, when the kids walking down the down the street, he listened to headphones. That's the song in the headphones. You're supposed to realize that. It matters. Does it? Hell yeah, it matters. So if you like, if all these movies we're talking about, like Lost Boys, Freddy versus Jason, <laughs> and like Green Room, if you took the music out of it, Green do you think it would change soundtrack. your perception of the film? Fuck yeah, yeah I think absolutely. Music changes your emotions and change you how you look at something like you just said when they're using a metal song and a scary scene yeah. like for whatever the fuck you know Dracula, Dracula 4000 
We haven't mentioned Jaws yet. I mean, come on, like just because sometimes it's just so goddamn obvious. We well, haven't talked about I, Halloween. I, I, I know. I, about, I, I, I know. I know. Is there, is there, talk, talking about if you changed, if you changed the oh, soundtrack. Oh yeah, that's a great. That's took, a good way to put. If you took that place. out, right, it wouldn't be. Those as, movies scary. would not be the same. Halloween, exactly. Jaws. I mean, there's so many. Could you imagine like Jaws came out like 2000 though, and it's like corn. Oh my shark, god! The shark's coming. It's just Jonathan Davis, like boom, bop, ba, <laughs> <laughs> They're like fucking bagpipes. Oh my god! See, wait, is there is there a movie that you could think of that you love that if they if you change the soundtrack you don't like that movie anymore? Don't like it? Like that changes the fucking whole experience. Weird. For you. Oh wow! No, because I'm not that really? simple. I'm not that thin. I you feel know. like sometimes there's still movies that I like and it has awful fucking endings yeah. or it's got really bad acting, and I love those stupid movies. So I think if you change the music, it wouldn't help. I mean, I think if in Friday Five, Violet gets killed to a different band other than Pseudo Echo, I'm I'm not as attracted to Violet. <laughs> it's very specific. It's very very I have specific. Nothing as specific as that. Sorry. <laughs> I just I just thought about that. It's hit my head. I was like, man, I really like that scene because the music and the dance moves, the yeah. shitty dance. I mean, moves. okay, if you took Queen out of Highlander, it's a completely different fucking movie. It is weird. It's, it's, like, what do you play when people die? What, you what do you do when they're fucking uh, in an immortal, you know, in front of a big window? Princess of the Universe was made for Highlander. <laughs> yeah. Without Princess of the Universe, you have no Highlander. It's not the same. And you have I mean, Adrian. They, they wrote like, what, six songs for that soundtrack and never released it as a soundtrack. Yeah. Well, that's, you, that's another one. It's like, it's on with just a kind of magic or whatever. I think it's a whole album they put out that had Highlander songs on it. I wonder you who got paid soundtrack. for that. Because hmm? I wonder who got paid for that. Because that series ran long after Freddie Mercury passed away, and that series used the whole like band. The three, whole, there's like a collective. They weren't like Metallica queen. and having like, you know, welcome right. to the band. You get two percent right now, but in I know, six but felt, years you go to twenty. I thought that whole thing was like a Freddie Mercury thing, though, with the Highlander thing. Maybe Brian not. May pretty much was the band. Really? Yeah, he's like the band leader. The guitarist uh, yeah. Brian May is the band leader. But of who did band. Christopher Lambert stand next to? <laughs> Good point. He's got a point. Oh my god, we're wrapping this up. That's what tricked me, though. You're trying to wrap this up, and if you watch the video, I want to go cry. I'm gonna, gonna go, go cry into your fucking Queen. Well, you're song. taking away my Highlander. Highlander music's important if, to me. If you take Queen out of Highlander, then Highlander sucks. It doesn't Queen suck. It's just I, I, it, so much of the appeal is gone. It's like Return, Return of the Living Dead. You take that music, and they when they change songs on a DVD, or they can't get yeah. the can't get the rights to a song and they change it. You know it automatically. If you take Queen like, out, what the fuck is this? If you take Queen out of Highlander and Wayne's World, does Queen stay as popular as they were? Holy the 90s? no! That scene that. changed yeah. history. Yeah. So every people who don't even know what the fuck they're doing. Because I don't feel like I would have ever heard that fucking I'd, song as I'd a never, child. That was if the I first time that. I heard Queen. Wow, I'm old. Uh, so if you take <laughs> if you, so <laughs> if we reverse that shit, yeah, Queen still. But Wayne's World doesn't suck. Way, it's just that one iconic scene that is just like a game changer. Yeah. You know. So it's weird. I think sometimes it keeps bands alive. I think it goes both ways, though. I think it, it helps movies, but there's yeah. certain bands that it reintroduces crowds to. That's a like good thing. Like, if you take a scene, certain scene out of a movie, like, see, yeah. if you take the scene of Alien Chestburster scene from Alien out yeah. of the movie, that's what that was the reason they even made the movie in the first place. They yeah. read the script and didn't like Daniel Bannon's script. They were like, but this one scene, we can build a movie over this fucking thing. There's yeah, certain was, scenes like that. Yeah, that, that's a big like. I mean, I mean, we could probably do a whole another hour and a half on that on things that would be ruined if you, you know, the other both ways. You know, bands that would be kind of fucked if they didn't have this. Oh, song a one hit wonders this off movie. of a soundtrack song. Yeah, yeah. So it's weird because we talk all this shit about like you know the movie making it or oh it's in this shitty movie so we like this more because it's a combination of these two kind of shitty things that just worked out. But like Queen's a great band. Yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody, great fucking song. Prince of the Universe is a great song. Yeah. But without those things, like me, especially me, I wouldn't know shit about Queen until probably my late teen years, if I was lucky. Because without Wayne's World and Highlander, G. Tom Mac, we would Tom nobody Mac, would be talking about that guy. G. Tom ever. Mac is Dudes of Wrath would never happen. God damn, it, we can't have that. Yeah, so we should be thankful for these genre films because they create all these fucking awesome things and they introduce us to all these amazing things, even if the movies suck. Yeah. The music. We need we to thank these, these awesome people. Yeah, because they keep things alive. Thank you, Dudes of Wrath. Thanks, Dudes of Wrath. <laughs> Dangerous toys. All you fuckers. Oh. Stay alive. All right. See you guys. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a good night. Yeah, bye. <laughs> we got to have Dudes of Wrath. Dudes of Wrath. <laughs> <laughs>
Podcast.